Good evening, brothers and sisters. Shalom, shalom. Today, I want to be discussing a very interesting topic. Actually, it's going to be topics because I won't finish doing it all in a go. I think it will be maybe in four sections. It's a very broad topic, but very interesting. So the title, whoo, final judgments. Yeah. So it's like different kinds of judgment. The title is final 10 judgments, but there will be a reason why as time goes on, you understand why it's 10. So it's different kinds of judgment, different scenes, different principles, different platforms. So the basis of our scripture is going to be Hebrew chapter 6. And the introduction of the teachings is uh, the judgment seat of Christ, which is only for believers. The judgment of Israel during the great tribulation. That is where God will finalize his judgment on Israel. They will go through hardship, but God will deliver them and many, many as who call upon the name of the Lord will be saved. So, and the third judgment will be judgment for all other nations. God will judge the nations for injustice, for the wickedness, for dividing uh, his land, Israel, for the manipulation of other nations. So, God has control over everything. So, number three, number four, the final judgment of all the remaining dead before the great white throne judgment. So that will be the final judgment and that is solely for unbelievers. So remember, the judgment seat of Christ is only for Christ, Christians, to receive our eternal rewards. Number two, the judgment of Israel during the great tribulation because God having finished with his Jewish nation, he loves them, he has ways he deals with them. Three, the judging of all the other nations. God will judge the nations. And also, the judgment of all the remaining dead. Yeah. So, that will be individuals and nations. Okay. So, I'm going to read our basic Hebrew chapter 6, verse 1 and 2. It said, Therefore, leaving the discussion of the elementary principles of Christ, let us go on to perfection, not laying again the foundation of repentance, from dead works and of faith towards God, of the doctrine of baptisms or the laying on of hands, of resurrection of the dead and of eternal judgment. So today I want to tackle a bit on the judgment part, okay? The other ones are also different topic in itself, but I think one of the most neglected is the judgments, yeah? Because it sounds too scary and we don't like it. And the Prince even testifies that, all the series they did, the books went too fast. But the judgment book, <laughs> people didn't just purchase them. But honestly, it's interesting. So don't be afraid, okay? All that, it, it will open your eyes. It will make you serious for the Lord. It will give you deeper understanding. God bless you. All right. So let's go on and see what we can do for today. So as we have seen, yeah? Um, how does God judge? Two ways that God judge, yeah? Before we even come to the today, I would like to speak about the judgment seat of Christ more. But let's see how it goes. Because as I said, we can't finish all the topics in a go. So when God is judging, there are two main ways God brings judgments on people, individuals. Judgment in history and eternal judgment. So when you look at Exodus 24 to 6, God is talking about blessings and curses on successive generations. So if the generation did good, generational blessings. If the generation did bad, curses yeah so that is judging in history but when you become born again you denounce that curse so you not follow the curses of your ancestors but if you do not repent that curse has been activated he said the curses does not come costless so you see that a particular tribe have a particular habit a particular country people have a particular attitude it's a pattern it's in the bloodline you can't just do away with it but when you get the blood covenant through Jesus Christ, so you become born again, you ruin the way. You decide to go according to God's commandment. Then he covers you with his blessings. Hallelujah. Psalm 103, verse 17 to 18, you will see that. Jeremiah 32, verse 18. And then eternal judgment affects our individual destiny, eternity as individuals. Okay. So what, when you are dying, what state were you in before you died? will decide your eternal judgment. Were you stealing? Were you cheating? Were you fornicating? Were you in the good side of God if you are born again believer? So that is why we have to judge ourselves every day. 
We don't wait till we are dead before we are judging. If we judge ourselves and do the right thing, that will make us to be in the will of God. Then that will determine our eternal destiny. So we don't die and our destiny is decided. But whatever we are doing is being recorded, documented, our deed, our action. We are repenting. Are we for asking for forgiveness? Are we trying to walk in God's ways? Are we trying to obey the commandments at least? For Romans chapter 8, there is now no condemnation in those who are in Christ Jesus, who walk not according to the flesh, but after the spirit. So if we confess Jesus and we still walking according to the flesh, the flesh knows us, but the spirit of God doesn't know us. So let's be careful, believers. So eternal judgment. So those are the principles that God is judging individuals and for everybody as well. So that is it, okay. But what are the principles of judgment, yeah? So when God is judging an individual, they are principle. He will judge you based on the truth you know. He will judge you according to your deeds. He will judge you with no respect of persons. He will judge you according to the measures of knowledge that you have. Yeah, and he will also judge you based on your secret motives and your thought because he knows everything. You could be thinking you are doing the right thing and everybody approves, but is that what God has asked you to do? So, Romans chapter 2. Read the Romans chapter 2, 1 to 16, 1 Peter 1, verse 17, and you would see, yeah, Malachi 1, 2 to 3. So, those are it for you, yeah, God will judge us according to truth, according to our deeds, according to our motive, no respect of persons, our secret sins. So, we have to be careful. Psalm 19, David said, oh Lord, deliver me from secret sin and presumptuous sins. And I'll be free of the great transgression. So when we are sinning secretly, nobody sees, but God is seen. Our soul is with us. It will bear us witness. So let's not deceive ourselves. Yeah, let's repent. If you are something, you are trying, you have weakness, talk to God. Be open. And then he knows that you are open. Because we can't hide and pretend like nobody is seeing. Okay. So there are four successive sins of judgment. Yeah. So what are the sins of judgment? So that is the judgment seat of Christ, yeah? And then the judgment of Israel, the judgment of the Gentile nations, and then the great white throne judgment. So that is the successive scenes of judgment. So judgment is in various types. Yeah, we as individuals, our action judges, our attitude judges, our deed judges. So sometimes we judge ourselves by what we do. But then God also has his own. So there are many uh, stages, okay? So today, I think I wouldn't go too much about Israel and Gentile nations and all that. I would like to talk about the Burma seats of Christ for believers. And then I'll conclude there and then we'll take the other ones because they are all in details. I'm just trying to scratch everything together. So if you want to know more about the great white throne judgment for unbelievers, read Revelation 20. It's interesting to know these things, you know. So God is a God of justice after all. Yeah. God is a God. Sometimes we don't understand. Oh, people have done this and that, that and they've gone scot free. No, they haven't gone scot free. Maybe in the physical, you know, because human beings, we measure prosperity with cars, houses, money. Yeah, God doesn't measure it that way. So people could be doing wicked and they are still living good in your eyes. <laughs> but it is God who knows whether they are living good or not. Okay. So, great white throne judgment. Hmm, it sounds, the topic sounds white throne that is actually wicked okay so let's talk about the burma seat of christ that is what me and you as born again believers want to talk about it's loving so in the burma seat of christ you are not being judged to go to hell you are being judged on the rewards yeah okay so second corinthians chapter 5 verse 10 we will all appear before the judgment seat of christ okay so read it second corinthians 5 10 first john chapter 5 verse 17 yeah, I won't give you too much scriptures. You can also read John 3.18 or John 5.24. I'll try and type them on my YouTube site. Yeah, that will just be under the title, The Judgment Seat of Christ. And I will also do like other short, short introduction of the judgments of God. Okay, so Burma Seat of Christ. You know, during the Roman officials sat on the, to execute judgment, they sat on the Burma Seat to execute judgment. Jesus and the Pontius Pilate uh, sat on his Burma seat to judge Jesus. Yeah. So Jesus appeared before a Roman official, Pontius Pilate. That was the Burma seat. So when they would judge, they have thrones that they sit on. It's like when we go to the law courts, they have seats that they sit. Yeah. 
to do judging. The lawyers can help me out. See, I'm not very good with law things. <laughs> so, okay. So you don't just go to court and you have been judged. You see there's a hearing. People are sitting, our judges, our lovely lawyers, and, you know, they do what they do. And they put on their nice, uh, you know, sometimes I find their heart funny. Bless them. So, the judgment seat of Christ will be an eternal judgment for believers only. Okay. Eternal judgment for believers only. So, we will be judged based on our motives. First Corinthians 10, uh, verse 3. We will be judged based on our obedience. Matthew 7, 21. I think it's 1 Corinthians 10, 31. Yeah. We will be judged based on our obedience. Matthew 7, 21. If God gave you a gift, are you doing it to please men or are you doing what God told you to do? Okay. Yeah. Are we using the power of the Holy Spirit or are we walking in the flesh? Or are we using divination power? Because some people are getting wrong powers to deceive people. Be careful. You will account for it. If the Lord is not speaking... Don't go and be seeking evil powers or manipulation. Use God's spirit. God is greater than evil powers. Okay. How we use our service in this life will determine the position we occupy in eternity. Luke 19, 11 to 15. So sober assessment. We have to learn to self-assess ourselves. Our service in life. Are we doing it to please men? Are we working within our boundaries or are we going above our capacity? So we have to know our calling. Don't try to be busy figuring out everybody else calling. What are the things that God has placed in you that you can do better? Be you. Uniquely you. Admire other people and appreciate other gifts. Because we can't deceive ourselves that we can be everything. Okay. Even in specialities. Even in nursing. In doctors. There are so different dimensions. So one doctor cannot say, I can do surgery. I'm doing... Uh, 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 gynecology no you study it little bit but the one that specializes in obstetric and gynecology knows deeper you understand if you're a general practitioner you have nowhere near to go and messing about with <laughs> intensive surgeries you understand the cardiologists have studied so much about his cardio things and even within that there are still divisions so let's know who we are if god has called you to be an intercessor teach according to the measure do what you know but know your boundaries. Do what you know how to do. But what you don't know, don't go there. Because God is going to judge all these things. And if we've made mistakes and taught people wrongly, let's repent. You know, let's not abuse power. If we do, there's always room for repentance, development, growth, self-assessment. Let's not be proud and arrogant. Sometimes people who, are, who don't even know what we know can also teach us what they know. So not to do good when you, are, you can do it is also sin. So let's learn when we can help somebody, we can do good because God will judge all these things. So we have to be careful. Lisa, when I was angry, you didn't feed me. When I was naked, you didn't give me a cloth. So don't wait till you see Jesus before you give him food and clothing. When you can help somebody, you have five shoes. You think they need it. They have your same shoe size. They are humble to receive. Give them. We have too many clothes sometimes. Pack some. Send it to Africa. Give some to charity. You have a sister or brother. Bring them to the shop, spend 30 pounds on them for what they like. Treat them, make them happy. You know, there are different ways we can help people. There are older people around you who need help. Once a month, voluntary go and clean their house. If according to the law, you are permitted. Because in this country, we have to be careful what the environment, be sure you are safe. But when you can do good help, shop for somebody. If you can, you know, show somebody some love. You know, talk to them on the phone for a long time. Sometimes... They are not making sense, but let them feel important, you know. So God is judging all these things, okay. So I think today I'll leave it here. So the Bema seat of Christ, we have to work for our eternal reward. We don't work for our salvation. Jesus has done it all. But we have the responsibility and accountability to obey his commandment, to obey his, his, uh, his testament or, you know, what God requires us. Let's not pick and choose, okay? Let's not pick and choose. So today, this is what I have for you. It's a very broad teaching. I've struggled enough to be able to put it to pieces, but I'm happy. And I'm going to be treating different series. And I hope we come up with a better video, okay? If you have any comment, you can drop. If you have any addition, any correction, we are all learning. God bless you, brothers and sisters, okay? If you haven't subscribed to my channel and you want to, you can subscribe. 
God bless you and thank you very much.